behalf of RBCS, RBCS Australia, RBCS New Zealand, and Software Testworks, we welcome everyone today to this webinar on advanced software testing with decision tables. I am Rex Black, president of RBCS, a worldwide testing and quality assurance firm serving clients ranging from small startups to Fortune 20 global enterprises. Since 1994, RBCS has been both a pioneer and leader in quality hardware and software testing. RBCS has offices in the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and Sri Lanka with partners around the world. RBCS delivers insight and confidence to our clients, helping them get quality software and hardware products to market on time and with measurable return on investment. RBCS has a team of international consultants that deliver customized training, consulting, and outsourcing services for companies that are looking to improve their test and quality assurance practices. RBCS has helped hundreds of companies reduce development and support costs while assuring the best quality products are delivered to customers. I am the author of Pragmatic Software Testing, Advanced Software Testing Volumes 1 and 2, Foundations of Software Testing, Critical Testing Processes, and Managing the Testing Process. I hold a degree in Computer Science and Engineering from UCLA. I'm also past president of the International Software Testing Qualifications Board and the American Software Testing Qualifications Board. Before we start the presentation, a couple of housekeeping notes. If you have any questions during the course of the webinar, feel free to submit them throughout the presentation at any time via your webinar interface. There is no need to ask for copies of the presentation because the presentation is already posted on the web at www.rbcs-us.com. If you are having problems with either the audio or visual components of this webinar, please contact GoToWebinar Support. If for whatever reason you cannot get to the webinar online or if you are dealing with an unreliable connection, please download the slides of this presentation from the basic library, which is on the resource page of www.rbcs-us.com, and be sure to use the telephone to connect rather than voice over IP. That said, <clears throat> pretty unusual for people to have difficulty using this facility. It's proven uh, quite uh, reliable. OK, so down to business. Today's presentation is the first in a multi-part series on advanced software testing. Uh, we'll do a few of these, and uh, at least three. I, I haven't really decided exactly how many. I'm going to keep doing them until I either run out of uh, ideas or um, people tell me they've had enough or <laughs> with some other reason we stop having them. Now, we're not going to do only these webinars on advanced software testing techniques. We'll interleave these with some others. Uh, but there will be a periodic feature in the webinars. Um, the material that I'm going to cover, at least initially, for the first, I don't know if I did a dozen of them, I'd have enough material for that, uh, will will come from um, my popular books, Advanced Software Testing Volume 1 and Pragmatic Software Testing. And in this particular uh, webinar, we are going to start with decision tables. Now, I chose to do this series of webinars on advanced software testing techniques because there are so many powerful test design techniques that have been developed over the last 30 years, and, and yet so few of these are in, an, in regular use. And in a lot of cases, people simply aren't aware of the techniques, or they don't know how to use the techniques, or they can't identify situations where they, they can use the techniques. So this series of webinars will help address those uh, issues. It's, it's kind of like if you were a a master carpenter or something like that, or want to be a master carpenter, to go through a whole series of webinars on how to use various kinds of carpentry tools. That's kind of the way to think of this series. OK, so we will start with decision tables and the application of decision tables for the testing of uh, business logic. Now, that's an important point to start with. Um, when you're testing with decision tables, you are focused primarily on the testing of business logic, not on um, user interfaces, or typically on other internal interfaces between components or on interfaces between the application and the operating system or database management system or uh, other sorts of uh, cohabiting software or hardware or something. It's uh, it's really it's implementation of business logic within the system is the uh, sweet spot, if you will, for this technique. Okay, so 
as I said, we're starting a series of webinars here, uh, excerpted in this case from Advanced Software Testing Volume 1. Uh, this is a book for test analysts and test engineers. Uh, we also offer a course, um, Advanced Test Analyst course, uh, both live and e-learning versions, and this uh, material is, is part of that course. Um, of course, a very small part of the course. The live course is five days long, so uh, what we're going to cover here is you know an hour. So, um, give you a feel of the kind of uh, in the depth of, of coverage um, in in that course. Though it's uh, all of a similar level of intensity. Now, I mentioned testing of um, business logic, and rather than testing of, of input field validation, so. If you're testing input field validation, and by this I mean does does each field on a, a um, screen or, or other form of input uh, accept values it should accept and reject values it should uh, reject, then the equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis are going to be the more useful uh, techniques there. Now, I, I wouldn't really consider those necessarily advanced software testing techniques, so there are some advanced things that we can do with those. But I'm going to assume that uh, you know what I mean by an equivalence partition and a boundary value, and that it's also fairly clear how one would use those for testing um, input validation uh, by putting in the minimum and maximum uh, allowed values, for example, into a field and then just outside of those legal ranges, testing to see what happens there, testing with uh, things like zero and other kinds of special values. Um, so that's that's input validation, and that's that's really not what we're focused on here. What we're focused on with decision tables is um, what happens, what does the system do after it gets those inputs, and presumably they have been validated, and now it has to decide what actions to take. Uh, of course, this is the application solving the problem it was written to solve. Uh, I'm not saying that the uh, input field validation code is, is unimportant. Obviously, it's very important. It's important from a security point of view and a usability point of view and, and from a functional point of view. And certainly, a large percentage of the code in interactive applications does indeed handle input field validation. But the, the, that's not why people create software. People create software to implement some sort of business or problem solution logic. And um, that's really what we're focused on with decision tables. Now, there are a couple other techniques that are very useful for testing business logic, uh, state-based testing, and use cases. And those will be the subject of uh, at least two subsequent webinars. And as I said, there might very well be other ones here. If we, uh, we, so the, the mood takes me, and uh, this proves popular and, and uh, useful. But here we're going to cover decision tables and the a related concept that you might run into from time to time called a cause-effect graph which um, is not something that I think is used as much, but it is uh, equivalent, and it would be a good idea to understand how to deal with one should you come across one. OK, so decision tables, conceptually, are about testing the rules that govern the handling of transactional situations. So let me describe what I mean exactly by a transactional situation. 